What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Very excited this week because we're finally getting back to the Broke Boy real estate content that I originally pushed out a couple weeks ago in the introduction video to that series. And that's what I love, doing Broke Boy real estate, finding deals and using, basically maximizing what income you have to acquire properties. And so, I don't know if you guys remember, but I already pushed out a video on how to find deals and how to negotiate those deals. And so I'm gonna put those videos in the insert right here above. And so refer back to those first and then come here because with this video, we're gonna talk all about wholesaling. And wholesaling, the biggest part, probably the hardest, is actually finding the deals and negotiating them. So once you watch those, come right back here. And also, before I kick this video off, just wanted to get some feedback from you guys. Um, just, are you guys enjoying the content? What specifically are you liking, disliking? Just looking for some general feedback to see, you know, where to take this channel. You know, what would you like to see more? Are there any specific uh, content that you'd like to learn more about? Just let me know, hit me in the DMs, comment in the box below. I uh, just wanna know, you know, is this good or is it trash? I uh, just wanna get, get some feedback from you guys before I move forward and so, Hit me with those comments and let's dig into this content. All right, wholesaling. I wanted to start with this concept because probably the biggest barrier to entry or excuse, I don't know if I wanna say excuse because this has like a negative connotation, but reason, probably the biggest reason people tell me they can't get involved in real estate is because they say, I got no money. But the thing is, I don't either, but I'm doing it. And so wholesaling is probably the easiest way to get into real estate because you literally do not need money to do this because no money is involved on your end of this transaction. Because wholesaling is basically just finding the deal, right? Getting it under contract at a certain purchase price, finding a buyer that wants to buy it, and matching them, and then you're just making the premium in between. So for example, you find a house worth 50K. I'm just gonna use whole numbers here and make it real simple for you. 50K, and it's a good deal, right? It's still, it's still a good deal for the buyer, so you can market it at 60K. So you get it under contract from the seller for 50K, hand that, assign that contract to the buyer for 60K, you just made $10,000 the difference between that and you didn't do anything. You didn't put any money into the deal at all. You literally just set up the buyer for a deal and got the seller to sell the house. Boom, too easy, right? So I'm gonna break down wholesaling, we'll say into five steps. Five is a good round number two. So we're gonna break it down real easy so you understand. So the first step is going to be finding the deal. Like I said, refer to the video before, finding the deal. Number two, negotiating the deal. Also refer to that video and come back here. Step three is getting it under contract. And I'm gonna show you a, an example of what a wholesale contract looks like, just so you guys kind of know how to design your contracts. All right, check it out. Here is an example of a real estate purchase contract here. All right, and this is just a one pager. It's real short and sweet that I like to send out to people and it just gets the deal locked in. And there's no standard to a purchase contract either. You can literally use whatever you want or you know whatever document you decide to, to draft up really. Like you can even put it on like a napkin with a Crayola crown. Probably wouldn't advise it, but it's just, you can do that really. As long as both parties sign and consent to the terms, that's all that matters. And I just send this contract to my closing agreement once it's signed. So here's just a little header, I have my business logo, and I, I uh, deleted some of the information on here just so I you know, keep my life a little private. But just a standard form here, real estate purchase contract, you wanna include the date, the address, the purchase price. Um, you wanna include a settlement date, and so you know, I just say within X amount of days, however long you wanna make that. And then you wanna include here just some of the key words that you want to include in your contract. So, of course, what I like to include is seller will deliver a clear marketable title. That's important. You want to make sure there's no liens on it that you're unaware of. So, I, you know, you want a clear and marketable title. 
I agree to pay my own closing costs. A lot of times I'll also just agree to pay all the closing costs, uh, but this particular one is just my own. Uh, the buyer is not represented by a real estate agent and is not licensed. Of course, I'm not licensed yet and um, I'm not being represented. I don't need an agent to do these deals. Um, I also include this stipulation where the buyer reserves the right to inspect the property and I agree to purchase in an as-is condition. Lastly, and most importantly, especially for wholesaling, you need to have this line in here, which is the contract is assignable. This statement is probably the most important because this alone allows you to wholesale it. If you don't include this contract as assignable, you won't be able to assign this contract to somebody else and hence wholesaling isn't an option. So if you plan on wholesaling or if you just need another exit strategy, include the statement in your contract. That will make it eligible to wholesale. Lastly, this, object, or this offer is subject to satisfactory inspection of the premises and verification of any and mortgages. That's just to protect me. You know, I want to have a last look through the property and make sure everything looks good and uh, nothing happened from the time that we signed until closing. I include the seller's information, my information, and if this is established already, then I'll include the escrow and title company. And then there's a line for buyer and seller to sign. And so that's a pretty simple one pager. I like to keep it short and simple, just one page document that summarizes the terms. Um, sometimes if the contract or if the, the terms are a little more complicated, I will send it to my attorney who will fill out a more formalized purchase offer, which is like a standard form 2T here in North Carolina. Um, but I think most of the time this works fine. And like I said, there's no standard to this. You can make this and design it however you want. As long as just make sure you include the important facts in here that you want. And that's pretty much a real estate purchase contract in a nutshell. So once you have that deal under contract, then you'll move to step four. And step four is basically marketing the deal and finding a buyer for the property. Um, and you want to put together a deal profile and shoot those out to your buyers list and find someone that's interested in it. And I'm going to show you an example of a deal profile real quickly here. All right, here's a basic deal profile example. And this is a pretty simplified one. Normally, if I was going to send one out, I would probably build it out a little more professional, make it look a little cleaner, a little more crisp and professional. Uh, but in this case, we're just going to show one that I a kind of a rough draft I made here. But basically, what you want to do is just highlight the important information, all the information that you think would be pertinent to tell the buyer to make them interested in purchasing this property. So here's a property I locked up under a contract. You know, you'll have a basic photo that you want to show them what the property is, some basic stats. So this is what I want to sell it for. This is what the property is actually worth after repairs and maybe some basic numbers just to kind of beef up your, your stats here. So like, you know, like I saw, I checked it out on Zestimate. This is what Zestimate says. This is what PropStream says. This is what the tax records value it at. Just so the buyer kind of knows, all right, what is this property probably worth? And I also like to include a rent estimate as well. I put that in here. So right here, I just kind of highlighted some, some basic facts that I think are important. And I probably should have included the renovation amount here as well, but I, I include it here in, in a quick little paragraph right up of the property. You know, you just want to cover basic facts. It's a brick, 3-2, moving ready. Um, you know, in order to get a full after repair value, probably need about 20K for just a lipstick renovation, carpet, interior paint, maybe a light kitchen bath remodel. And of course, landscaping looks kind of janky right now. Um, and just some other, some other basic information. So like, for, for example, this one, um, kind of an interesting story here, but records show that the square feet is smaller and the bath is a 1.5, but this one has been renovated and that's not considered when you look at it at a tax record perspective. So I just wanted the buyer to know that it, it is actually 14,500 square feet, not what's listed on the tax records. And it is a full two bath on a 1.5. Those are important information because they're going to try to do their own due diligence, make sure that you're, you're checking out like what you're saying is the truth. And so you just want to make sure that they have all the facts that they need. And I also want to include comps. Comps are important because 
That's what determines the ARV, the after repair value. So here are some comps I found from this particular property. So this kind of just shows you what, you know, what could this property be worth after repair. So when you pull your comps, you want to make sure that they're within a certain radius, pretty close to the property that you're selling. You want to make sure that they're in a certain, like pretty close to the same square footage and uh, they sold within a reasonable date, like not too far long. I usually like to say within the last 12 months. So here are some comps I pulled. So all these are kind of within a similar square footage, except for this one. This one's a lot bigger. Probably, you know, probably, I don't know if there would have been a better comp, but they're all three twos and they were all purchased within the last six months. And as you can see, they, they all sold for, you know, somewhere between 150 to 160. And so based on the comps, you, and you want to find at least a minimum of three, five is probably better. So a minimum of three and you know, when you average what all the comps sold for, you can kind of determine, all right, so the ARV is probably going to fall somewhere between 150, 160,000 based off of the comps I found here. So that's important as well. And then what you want to do is include photos. So, you know, I took some photos and those are all in here as well. Um, you, you know, buyers usually want to see photos to maybe verify whether they think your 20K in renovations is accurate. So you want to include plenty of photos so they can browse through them, run their own numbers, and then, you know, be able to sell the property to them. And that's pretty much this in a nutshell. Like I said, for a deal profile, I probably want to make this look a little cleaner, right? This is like a rough draft I put together for you guys. Uh, but it's kind of the basic information, just basic stats, comps, and pictures. And that's pretty much it. So once you find your buyer, you move to step five. And step five is closing this deal and making that sweet cash. And you will get paid out at the closing. So once the buyer closes on the property, uh, those funds that you set up in your contract will be dispersed to you then. And so, uh, for example, it'll show on the settlement statement, you know, how many, which, where, which funds are going where. In some states, it's, it's mandatory to show the buyer how much they're paying or the wholesaler on your on for your end. Uh, some states they don't have to. Um, I don't know if that's a big deal or not. Me personally, I'd rather be honest with people and tell them how much I'm making on this contract. Um, just I think it just builds a better relationship of trust, and it also shows them you know I'm giving you a good deal. Uh, I'm not being greedy, and so then it sets up a better relationship to do a future in the business with these people when you, when you're kind of more upfront and honest with them. Um, and that's just my opinion, you know, everyone does business differently. And that's pretty much all there is to wholesaling. Of course, that process sounds simple, but, you know, it could take a while depending on how much time you're investing and, you know, the type of leads you have. And so to summarize the process real quickly again for you, one, find the deal. Two, negotiate the deal. Three, lock that thing in under contract. Four, build a deal profile and find a buyer for the property and then five, send that thing to closing. Um, if there's any, you know, if you have any questions about this, definitely reach out. Um, like I said, it's, it's the easiest way to get into real estate primarily because you don't need to put any money into the deal. And it's a good side hustle. Like you can make from one contract, you know, a couple thousand up to like maybe 20K, something like that depending on what kind of deals you're finding. Um, but like I said, if you find one deal, that's your quota for the month. So for me, I try to get at least one locked up every month and that's a steady stream of cash flow that I'm getting every single month. Also some side notes for success because I've kind of had to learn these processes along the way as well. For one, explaining wholesaling to the seller because a lot of times, you know, the seller doesn't understand what wholesaling is. And it could sound kind of sketchy when you explain it to them. Like, cause basically you're saying, Hey, you know, sell me your house so I can sell your house to somebody else. It's going to freak them out. You want to be careful with the way you word it. I would, how I like to go about it. Cause I mean, I do like to be upfront and honest with people is I, I say, you know, Hey sir, ma'am, um, just so you know, I'm bringing in an investment partner. And so you won't see me at closing 
it'll be my partner at closing and then I'll tell them who my investment partner is. And, and that kind of, I think, makes it sound more appealing, puts it in a better light. Um, another quick tip for you for wholesaling is uh, I use DocuSign or a similar app like DocuSign because I can easily put these contracts together and then email them out to the respective parties that need to sign it. They can electronically sign and I'll have that contract back within you know 24 hours. Sometimes my clients are like older people and uh, like, you know, they don't know how to use, you know, email or the internet yet, which makes it a little more difficult. Um, and then in that case, you physically have to get the contract and like drive it out to them, which I've done before. Um, but hustle's got to hustle, baby. So you got to do what you got to do to make the money. And so just use DocuSign if you can. If not, then you got to go about the hard way. And that's wholesaling 101 in a nutshell. So if you guys have any questions, definitely reach out, um, comment in the box below. And I'll, I'll, I always answer whatever is, what's ever in the box. So reach out with me with any questions, comments. If you like what you saw, please like and subscribe. Always love the support and just have a good one guys until next week.